Hey guys, welcome to another Thursday edition of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick, and this week I'm going to be talking about uh, something that uh, I really love. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it on the show before, but um, I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite jazz albums today. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on the link below and go check out our Facebook group. Um, you know, also make sure you click on the uh, subscribe button and get the, uh, hit the notification bell also. So you get uh, alerts every time we release an episode, which is every Thursday and every Sunday. But, um, so this is something that, uh, you know, I've, I've noticed on the Facebook group lately and that's, uh, more and more people posting, uh, pictures of their, of their, uh, jazz collection. And I don't know, it, it, it's something that I don't know if it's just, becoming more popular, which is cool with me because I love jazz. And, and you know, it, it's it's a genre that I never really listened to when I was younger. And it really wasn't until a couple of years ago that I bought my first jazz album and fell in love with it right away. And, uh, you know, I, was, I, I've, I don't have a big jazz collection. I got about 20 albums or so I'm going to kind of burn through today. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking, on, talking about them. But, um, you know, if, if there's something that I that I show on here that you haven't heard before, make sure you go and check it out because they're just absolutely fantastic albums. So if you guys have watched the channel for any time, I, I, I've talked about it before. I'm a huge John Coltrane fan. And, I mean, that's kind of what started me off down this path was I was out at the record store one day and I came across a Love Supreme. And uh, I want to say it was on sale for like 18 bucks. So I grabbed it, you know, because it's just a... Uh, I've always known about this album, you know, it's been, it's on the list of, you know, a lot of the lists out there, like the greatest jazz albums ever recorded, generally have a Love Supreme somewhere on there. So I was, I at least knew of the album, I just never heard it before. And uh, I, I put it on when I got home and I was really kind of blown away by how great this album is. Um, just, uh, this is on, on Standard Black. Um, uh, they did release a, like, limited edition Smoke uh, variant of this, which looks really cool. It reminds me of, like the old smoky jazz bar. Um, just a just great overall album. Uh, so after I bought that, I was actually at work. I think I was talking to Ian at work actually. And another guy that we work with was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I, I know a lot about jazz. If you're a, if you really like that album, you really have to check out Coltrane live at Birdland. And so this was uh, 1963 that this was recorded. Just a fantastic, fantastic album. And this was kind of the one that really, like I said, I listened to, to A Love Supreme. I listened to Live at Birdland. And that's where it really kind of kick-started me down this, uh, down this jazz path. Uh, another great one is, this was recorded in 59. This is Giant Steps. I know they just released the, or they released a 60th anniversary edition of this. Um, it has some additional tracks. I, I, I almost bought it, but... I don't know. It, it's just uh, with Coltrane, a lot of the stuff that hasn't been, I know a lot of stuff's been released since his death, but um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where it is, if it's good enough to, to have been released on an album, it's probably, you know, has been released, but um, I don't know. I, I may still, still eventually pick it up just, uh, just to have those extra tracks, but definitely love uh, giant steps. Just a, another fantastic album. Another one is, this is one that's, just, it's him. I think this is the only Duke Ellington album I, order, I, I own. But this was recorded in 62. This is Coltrane and uh, Duke Ellington. Just another fantastic album. It has probably one of my favorite jazz songs on here. Um, if I can pull this out here. Um, uh, in a Sentimental Mood is just a fantastic, fantastic song. Like I said, probably one of my favorite jazz songs ever. But, um... You know, just another one of those, if, if you haven't heard this album, it's definitely worth uh, picking up and, and, and listening to it. Uh, Lush Life is another one. This was recorded in, in 57. Uh, 57 was kind of a big year for John Coltrane. Um, he released an album with Thelonious Monk, which is a fantastic album, which I'm going to get to eventually. Um, he recorded uh, Lush Life. He recorded, um, what else? Uh, did Del uh, I know that I'm, I know I'm missing one, but, um, I don't know. There's a couple of really great albums. He was a part of in 1957 and lush life is definitely another one of those perfect, you know, perfect kind of recordings. And this is kind of cool. I think this is the only colored, uh, Coltrane album I have. This was, uh, this is obviously a reissue. 
This is on Prestige. It's just a blue, blue vinyl. Kind of cool looking. Uh, like I said, I think this is my only colored uh, uh, Coltrane album. A couple more here. This was um, this is from 1959. This is uh, Coltrane Jazz. I don't know what... This is a reissue, and I was never actually able to find this the, the year on Discogs. But uh, I'm not sure, because obviously this is not an original. I don't think any of my... I, I don't have any original press and Coltrane albums. But, um, you know, Jazz is just a overall kind of great album. It's uh, Atlantic. Um, this is uh, from 1962. This is on Impulse. He did a lot of stuff on Impulse. This is Coltrane. This, I just recently, I think this is probably my most recent Coltrane album I picked up. Um, like I said, just a kind of overall, just a great, great album. This is uh, got some really nice packaging to it, too. This is one of the few, like, gatefold Coltrane albums I have. Kind of gives a little bit about the album, the guys that played on it. You know, just a uh, kind of cool little package. Oops. Um... This, this other one, the next one is, this is the only album that John Coltrane ever recorded for Blue Note. This was the other album, this is the other 1957 album I was trying to think of. And that is, of course, how could I miss out on, on uh, Blue Train? Just an absolutely great, uh, great album. Like I said, 1957 was a huge year for John Coltrane with uh, Lush Life, Blue Train, the the album with, uh, with Thelonious Monk. There was also uh, something else I'll get to in a minute. That uh, Coltrane was part of. It was uh, probably one of my favorite jazz albums ever. But uh, the the last Coltrane album I have is this is the this is the lost album. This was recorded in '63, and I don't know. I was, was kind of torn on this. This is one of the things. I, like I said, Coltrane has released a lot of music since his death, and this is one of the things that uh, they just kind of came across, packaged up, and and released. But um, you know, it's not the it's not the best work Coltrane has done. But uh, overall, it's a really fantastic album. Um, it's kind of cool to listen to the different tracks and how they all kind of progress and, and are put together. But uh, just an overall kind of great package. It, if you haven't checked out any of these Coltrane albums, definitely definitely make sure you check them out. Another one of those like staple uh, jazz albums that most people have, most, at least most jazz fans have in their collection. And this is one that um, is supposedly coming out it's supposed to be coming out this year as the uh, the next UHQR uh, Analog Productions release, and that's Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Um, you know, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Miles Davis is the only, I believe he's the only jazz musician that's inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which I think is an absolute crime that uh, Coltrane is not in there. But, you know, I, Ian and I have talked about that before on the show. But uh, anyway, just uh, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, absolutely fantastic album. This is recorded, that was uh, 50, 1959, this is on Columbia, this is a Columbia pressing. Um, it'd be nice to get that UHQR, it's going to sound absolutely fantastic. Uh, the next album is one that, um, this is an album that I kind of went back and forth on for a while, and I end up picking up an older pressing, I believe this is an original pressing, and that's, uh, this is recorded in 1969, is released in 1970, and that's, uh, that's Bitches Brew. Um, you know, it's a different kind of, of jazz. It was Miles Davis was definitely, uh, you know, kind of experimenting a little bit more with his jazz style. Um, you know, there's some, uh, it, it's different from a lot of his other works, especially if you're used to listen to kind of blue and then you go listen to bitches brew. It's uh, definitely a different kind of album, but it's, uh, I definitely, it's grown on me over the last couple of years for sure. And then I also picked up the. Bitches Brew, this is a double image. Is that what it is? Yeah, double image. This was the Record Store Day release from last year. I kind of went back and forth on this, too. And I was talking to a couple of guys in line. I wasn't going to get it, um, but they kind of convinced me. They're like, hey, you know, if you're a jazz fan, you had Bitches Brew, definitely check this out. And I'm glad I did because it is a great, it is a really good album. I don't think it's as good as Bitches Brew, but, um, you know, it's definitely a great companion piece for sure. Uh, the next one is one that uh, is an, another album that's always on the top list of, uh, of best jazz albums. And it's one that I just recently got. And that's uh, Time Out by Dave Brubeck Quartet. Um, you know, I, I'm not a huge Dave Brubeck fan of this. I believe this is the only album of his I have. Actually, I, I take that back. I have Angel Eyes, which is 
I got that off the out of the dollar bin. But um, you know, I definitely loved this the first time I heard it. Just a, another one of those just really solid uh, uh, jazz album. I, you know, would I consider one of the top five or top ten jazz albums ever? Probably not. But um, you know, it's definitely it definitely belongs in that conversation at least. Um, and then I got a couple of Art Blakey albums. Uh, you know, this is another uh, jazz musician that. Uh, somebody at work turned me on to, but I've got Moan, and this was re- recorded in 58. It's another great jazz album. Um, and then I also have, this is the newest one I just picked up. This is Just Coolin'. I got this at a pretty decent price because the corners are kind of dinged up on it, but uh, it's another great, great uh, Art Blakey album. Just, uh, like I said, it's another guy, it's somebody else I'm getting more and more into. Uh, I will say that uh, on Kind of Blue... If I go back to the beginning here. So Kind of Blue was recorded in 59. This is actually recorded with uh, with John Coltrane. This was when John Coltrane was part of uh, Miles Davis's group uh, before he got kicked out. But uh, Cannibal Adderley is on this. Uh, Bill Evans is on this. Just a great collection that uh, of individuals that Miles Davis put together to record this. That's why it's just... Uh, like I said, I really can't wait to hear the the uh, UHQR treatment for this. So last five albums I have are all Thelonious Monk albums. And Thelonious Monk is probably my second favorite uh, jazz musician. And these are ones that have some interesting stories to it. The first one is one that I talked about in a previous episode. This is Palo Alto. This was just released uh, last year, I believe it was. And this was a recording from uh, 1968. Uh, I know I talked about it on a previous episode, but uh, this was, if you don't know the story, it's pretty cool. There was a kid, he was in high school, Palo Alto, California, was a big jazz fan, was putting on a benefit concert at his show, uh, wrote to um, the Thelonious Monk's manager and asked him to show up at the show. And uh, he was actually kind of surprised that he did. And this was a recording that no one knew about until uh, just recently. I, I believe it was the... Uh, I think it was the janitor that actually recorded this. There's actually the whole story inside the gatefold. It's actually kind of cool to kind of go through, and, and there's a booklet, booklet in there, and some other like uh, you know replicas. I think there's a replica um, poster from the show that's in here also. Just kind of some cool stuff and a cool little story. But um, you know, definitely a great album to to check out for sure. The next one is one that I picked up on uh, at Record Store Day. I think it was last year. It was either last year or the year before. I don't, I don't, actually, I can, it's probably printed on here somewhere. Uh, it just says Record Store Day, so I'm not sure what year it is. My, my French is really bad. So this is uh, Palais de Boza, I think is how you say how you pronounce that. Like I said, my French is terrible. But anyway, just a fantastic uh, album. This was one that uh, I think Vinyl Me Please just released. A really cool-looking splatter, um, a splatter version of this. Uh, someone on the Facebook group, I believe, has it and posted it. It looks pretty cool. I kind of went back and forth on it. I ended up just kind of sticking with the uh, with, a, with the uh, Record Store Day version of it. You know, it's a great album, but it's one I probably don't need multiple copies of. But anyway, it's uh, just a fantastic album. Uh, this next one is one that um, Mobile Fidelity did a, a release of this a couple of years back before I got into jazz. And now that... I love this album. It's one that uh, I'll never be able to find the the uh, MoFi version of it, and that's um, that's Monk's Dream. This was re- recorded in '62. Um, you know, just another great album. Just an overall, just fantastic album. It's one that you kind of I love tossing jazz music on and kind of going about my work. You know, kind of puts me in the right frame of mind, especially when I'm doing like schoolwork and things like that. But uh, just a great, great album. Then the last two are ones with John Coltrane. Um, so in in 56, I think it was like late 56, John Coltrane was fired from Miles Davis's group. And he latched on with uh, Thelonious Monk. And in early 57, they recorded Thelonious Monk with John Coltrane. And this is a fantastic album. This was actually, I believe... Um, I think this album was actually inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, I believe. Um, or it might have been the Music Hall of Fame. It's one of the Hall of Fames this album has been included in. Just a just a great album. Uh, it's not as good as the next album I'm going to talk about. But, um, you know, just a, 
they definitely did some great work together. Um, it, this was really early on in their relationship when they recorded that. I want to say it was like April, May 57, something along those lines. But once they got around to the end of 1957, there was a benefit concert put together. Uh, I don't remember who put it together, but it was like a who's who in the jazz world that was going to be at this benefit concert. And it was done on November of 1957. It's for Thanksgiving. And this concert that was put on, the, 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 this, these acts that was put together, there was two acts that, that, that Thelonious Monk did during that show. And both of them were kind of in legend. You know, the people talked about it, but there was never a recording of it. And then in 19, I'm sorry, in 2008, or it was either 2008 or, no, it was 2005. I think it was 2005. There was, um, i probably find the guy's name here. It's whole story is written inside here. But uh, Larry Applebaum is a curator at the Library of Congress, was going through the recordings and came across, unbelievably came across a recording of this. So this was this is a Thelonious Monk with John Coltrane at Carnegie Hall. And like I said, if you have not heard this album yet, it is an absolute masterpiece. There's there's two different sets. Uh, uh, there's an early set that they did during the show, and then a live set. Unfortunately, the, the I'm sorry, the, the later set. The the later set unfortunately was kind of cut off. So the the early set is all on there, but the later set, like I said, just a a partial. Um, piece from the performance just a great great album though like i said if you haven't checked this album out definitely make sure uh you do if you're if you're a jazz fan well that's all i got for you guys thanks for checking the show out you know there's a lot of albums there i kind of went through them pretty fast hopefully i didn't go through them too fast for you um you know make sure you check out any of those albums i talked about if you haven't if you don't know any of them uh, drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think are you guys into jazz do you uh, what, what jazz albums do you guys like? Are you seeing more and more people kind of get into the genre? Um, you know, if you haven't noticed, I'm a, a fan of that, like, 50s and 60s jazz. A lot of the newer stuff I'm, I am I haven't really got into yet. Um, but if you got suggestions, drop a comment and let me know. Um, you know, I'm always interested in looking for new and, and, and good music out there. So let me know. Make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace.